Hi and welcome to this video tutorial on how to start designing around and working into 3D scanned models. The problem with 3D scanned models is because they're scanned at such a high resolution we have really dense meshes when we're trying to work with these. As you can see in this shaded view as I zoom in the model is made up of lots and lots of these small triangles which means when you start to try and snap to certain points on the model Rhino often won't know where exactly to snap to because of all of the potential options and you'll get slow loading times and the model might crash or the file might completely close down. So in order to effectively work with these models what I try and do is create a simplified version of the model to design against so I can use the real world parameters that this 3D scan gives me but I don't have to wait for the long loading times that also happen with models such as this. To do this, what we're going to essentially do is create a skeleton of this model. In my layers here, I've created a skeleton layer in red so you can see the layer that's going to be created on. Now, to do this, we're going to be using the contour command to essentially chop our model up into a series of 2D lines. Now, what I'm first going to do is I'm just going to create a box in the corner of my model here and this is for reference for my contour model so we know the directions it's going to go. I'm just going to move it up to the corner of the model there so we have our box reference. Now we're going to select the model like so and we're just going to type in contour like so. Now depending on the size of your model we're going to change the contour amount but first we're going to pick a base point which will use the box for this so I'm going to choose the bottom of the box and then we're going to choose the direction of my contours. Now firstly I'm going to do some contours up through the model so the direction will just be upwards on the box like so. Now the distance between contours will depend on the height and size of your model and the units you're in. I'm in millimeters and my model is about five meters high so what I'm going to do is we want them relatively close together so we're going to set the distance between these as a 200 millimeters so this will be every meter there'll be five slices so for a five meter high model there'll be 25 slices through the model so once i hit enter it will then start sectioning up my model for me now depending on the density of your mesh this may take a while but as you can see there we've now cut those contours through and there we can see the contours through the model like so what you can always do with this is we can turn off the default layer and you can start to see how this skeleton is going to work. Now this is great for the kind of 2D planes like so but we also want to give some thickness to this. So I'm going to create another series of contours and we're just going to essentially select my mesh again. Make sure you've got all the components of that. We'll just lock the skeleton for now. Like so then we're going to type in contour again choose the base point from my box again and this time we'll choose a different direction we're going to go this way along the box and we're going to do 200 again for this and this way it will slice our model up in a perpendicular direction as so there and what we're going to end up with if we then hide our base model is essentially a skeleton outline, 2D cuts through the model, which we can start to use as a way to help us design into the model without the really heavy weight of our mesh. This means you can start to draw in other pieces on the model. So if I wanted to kind of draw in some cubes for a reference here, you can do so and you'll find that it's a lot faster than if I were to do it with my large model in place because the problem with those dense meshes is that because they're such high resolution it takes a long time to start to load or draw anything on top of them. So this skeleton effectively gives us a really easy way to work with the same constraints of the model but without that really dense mesh in place. What I usually do at this stage is just select all my pieces of my skeleton here like so and we'll just group these together to create a group of lines like so. And now what I'm going to begin to do is I'm going to start to model some small sort of device pieces in amongst my tree here using the skeleton as a reference point for that design. 
I wanted to create a suspended mirror piece that fits between the branches of this tree, so these sort of four branches here. So what I began to do was just draw out the lines using my sectional reference points from these 2D line work to connect and create essentially a framework for which my device would sit within. So these were done just by connecting up these cross-sectional pieces I made here. From this point, I modeled a series of legs which would hold the mirror piece in place. And if I remove the lines, you can see that the legs have kind of used the lines as a framework and then would be supported into the tree like so. So it would sit nestled between these branches. Then from there, I've modeled my disc piece that would sit in amongst that area there. And what we can now do is I can turn my skeleton off and turn my mesh back on and we'll put this on a rendered view so we can see it. And now you can see that this model piece now fits exactly amongst my tree here because I've used those precise cross sections but we've been able to do it in a very quick and easy way just using my sectional line pieces. And what we'll do now is we'll have a go at rendering this out as a final image once we've textured up our disk to see this sitting in place. I've now added some textures to this particular device and we can now render it out to see how it looks within its context here. So we can pick a view and I'm just going to render preview this particular view to see how this device might sit with its materials against the tree in this particular context. As you can see, as this now renders out, we get a nice image of this particular piece suspended amongst this tree. And as we've used the skeleton to design it with the exact proportions of the tree, this fits nicely in amongst the piece I've 3D modeled and scanned here. So that tutorial is just a quick way of how you can begin to work with these complex 3D scans using a skeleton piece to help you design into these scans with ease and without having to negotiate against that very detailed mesh you get with these type of scans here. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and if you want any other ways of rendering within Rhino or working with 3D geometry like this, please check out the videos on the channel.